Back in January 1975, I presented a series of programs on cable radio, Radio Fusion, in which I discussed paranormal phenomena. After the second program, I got a call from a very anxious gentleman. He told me he had heard my episode about spirits and claimed that something similar was happening in his residence. He said he had two boys and in their room some strange incidents were happening. Scratches and thumps were being heard and gravel and small stones were found scattered on the floor. The two boys were around the age of 11. At first I had some doubts. Was this a prank by some friend or colleague? But in his conversation, this man mentioned that his brother was someone that I was acquainted with, a person who was respectable in his community and quite widely known. I promised to get back to him with my thoughts. In the meantime, I searched in the telephone directory for the number of his brother and I phoned him. The latter confirmed the event and that the family was in a bit of bother because of this. The following day, I phoned the protagonist again and asked him if I could go and see for myself. He was rather hesitant and could not take a decision. Apparently, they were having some religious rituals and he did not want the place to be contaminated. I then asked him if I could interview him personally. He accepted with the condition that his voice would not be heard. I had the interview transcribed and found an actor who was prepared to read it in my program. The week before it was planned to be heard, I promoted the case. When I arrived at Redifusion headquarters to record and I had with me both the actor and the script, I was met by the assistant head of programs, the well-known Charles Arrigo, a true gentleman. He told me that the program was not going to be recorded and would not go on air. Apparently that morning a local daily had a big spread about the phenomenon and the family did not want to be the focus of any more publicity. To be honest, I was not a happy bunny and I was highly disappointed. When I thought about it, I understood. What I was about to do was not less sensational than what the newspaper had published. How the story leaked, I don't know. It could have been someone who had heard me recording and informed the newspaper, or maybe it was some other way. The protagonist did not contact me again. Some years later, I met another brother of his and asked if I could talk to the children and investigate further. But he told me it was better to leave them in peace. I did not insist. This is usually the fate of trying to investigate paranormal events. They become shy. It becomes very difficult to investigate them further. The next thing I heard about the story was during a popular program by Pepe Azzopardi, who mentioned that the Archbishop was frightened most when he saw a knife flying above his head and heading for an area in front of him during poltergeist activity. He was probably referring to this case. This was similar to other so-called poltergeist phenomena. The word poltergeist in German means mischievous spirit. We have already spoken about ghosts and spirits and there is no proof that they exist, whether they are mischievous or well-behaved. There is no energy that we know of that can have the faculties that human beings have, like pushing, pulling, scraping and making noises. If somebody can prove that there is some invisible entity that can do this, probably they will get the highest Nobel Prize, together with all the awards known in science. There could be no other explanations. In the 70s, there was a theory that during the age of puberty, kids have some sort of psychokinetic energy that can make them move objects with the power of the minds. But after decades of scientific experimentation, no proof exists that we can move a feather or a piece of paper without exerting some physical force. There have been charlatans who try to convince us otherwise, but they have not been very successful. So what's left? In most of poltergeist cases, which were investigated properly, it was discovered that they were nothing more than kids' pranks, not much different than those of the Fox sisters about whom we spoke in the previous vlog. When nobody's looking, the kids pick an object and throw it in the air. In the case of the 1984 Columbus, Ohio poltergeist, the camera was accidentally left on, and the girl, Tina, was caught throwing a telephone set and then pretending that nothing had happened. In the case of the Enfield haunting, about which films, documentaries and series have been made, the girl was photographed levitating over a bed, when in fact she was just jumping. In the Maltese case, probably, that's what happened. When the Archbishop was not looking, one of the boys threw the knife from behind. It sounds strange, I have no proof, but it, it's more possible that mischievous ghosts exist or that are, there are some forces which we have no evidence for. Until we have proof that paranormal manifestations can happen, I'm under no obligation to believe. 
It is worth mentioning that when this event happened in Malta, the film The Exorcist was being shown in cinemas. In the case of the Maltese poltergeist of 1975, I'm sure that the father and the uncles were genuine, as was the Archbishop, yet children of that age are not unknown to cause such pranks and then find it difficult to admit. Why? We cannot understand, because at that age the brain of a developing child is not the same as that of an adult. One of the reasons could be that they yearn for some kind of attention. I wish that, for the purpose of research and the truth, these boys, who should be in their 60s now, or at least one of them, would confess the truth with me or with someone who studies these phenomena seriously. I promise to keep total anonymity. In the meantime, I make this appeal and wait and hope, and I hope also that you are enjoying these vlogs, they are of interest to you. Uh, and I hope you can like and follow. I am going to talk about various phenomena. If you're interested in joining a like-minded group that discusses these manifestations open in a critical and skeptical way, send me a message on this email. If you have any questions or comments, also send me an email on shetico at gmail.com and I'll try to share with you my views. Thank you for following and until we meet again, goodbye.